So good morning. 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 We are um, this time in a place called the Roaches, which um, we think is still the Peak District. We're not too sure, but we've come up here for a day's photography, sort of a last minute thing really. We decided early this week we'll just come up and take some pictures. So I hope you enjoy our trip today um, and obviously we'll show you what we're up to as we go around. So we'll see you in a little while. Okay, I've only walked for a little while, um, and Dave's seen a shot that he wants to take. There's a building just over to the left of you, which um, I'll show you in a minute. It's in the distance, but um, I reckon you'll get a good shot from this. Um, so we're having a quick trial. I'll just turn you around so you can have a look. So over there in the, the distance is a uh, little building. Not too sure what it is. <clears throat> it's like a little cottage or something. But we're taking a picture of that, and we'll see how that one comes out. But while we're here, Dave's uh, taking this picture. I'll just paint you around so you can see the sort of view that we've got. We're not even up to the top of this mound at the mo moment. I wouldn't call it a mountain. It's a big hill, really. Um, but we're going up there. Um, but the views from here are spectacular. It's quite a bit of haze this morning. It's still quite early. Um, I'm hoping that the sun, which is coming out uh, at the moment, is going to burn that haze off. So if you look over there where that uh, river, lake, whatever is over there, there's a lot of haze around it at the moment. So as the sun warms up, we should get rid of that. And we'll get a nice view then of this valley. And um, looking at it, there's going to be some quite some good op uh, opportunities to get some pictures here. So the plan is we're going to go up to that hill that I showed behind us at the moment. Then when we come down, we're going to aim to go over to um, another building which is just over there so zoom in so over there that building um, where we're going to go and take some pictures there do some HDRs and that sort of stuff so we've got quite a lot to do today um, we're not just going to spend our time here we'll soon go somewhere else um, later on on the way back on the way back home um, <clears throat> so we'll keep you informed how we get on um, and as I start doing some shots I'll let you know how I've got my camera set up because um, I know some people like to know the settings that we use. Um, so we'll be doing that as well. So, well, I hope you can hear me. I hope the microphone's picking me up all right. It's very windy um, at the top. Uh, we took some pictures on the way up, did a panorama, which um, uh, I don't know if I've put it in the, the video yet or not, but there was a, a panorama that we've done. Um, so we've reached the top. I'll show you where we are. So there's Dave over there at the moment, setting himself up to do some pictures. Um, still very, very hazy. So I don't know how high we are. Um, if I come to the edge, anybody with vertigo, sorry about this. Um, we're quite high, um, but it's quite a steady walk up actually. Not too problem, not too much of a problem walking up. Um, very, very nice, very pretty up here. I'm sorry about the <coughs> that just flapping around there. There we go. Sorry about that. So yeah, here we are at the top. Um, Absolutely spectacular views, bit windy as I said, um, still very hazy, waiting for the haze to get burnt off a bit by the sun, which is getting stronger all the time, we start feeling the heat quite a bit. Um, yeah, not too much to report on really, going to do some more pictures up here. Uh, when I get myself set up, I'll explain the sort of shots I'm going to be taking and um, also explain you know, how I'm setting the, the camera up. So I'll have to wait for a little while until then, because uh, as I say, I want to get this sun to, to burn some of this haze away. 
So I've decided to do um, a shot here, which is a practice shot to do HDR. I've done this several times in my other videos, but I'll explain what I'm actually doing. I've set my camera, I thought actually before, my camera only did three shots for an HDR, but it actually does five if you set it correctly. I had got it set correctly. It's fairly new to me, this camera. Um, so anyway, I've got this image uh, that I want to take a picture of and um, I want to do HDR. So I've set my camera to do a thing called bracketing. So if I go into the menus here, let's hopefully you'll see this okay. So in the menu there you can see, hopefully it says BKT, which means bracketing. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and that means it will take uh, how many shots I want it to take. So it will do underexposed, perfectly exposed and overexposed, but it will do it with five shots. So it will do two underexposed, then perfectly exposed, and then two overexposed. Then what you do is you take that um, set of images, you put them into something like Photoshop, um, and you combine those images together uh, to create this HDR, which stands for um, High Dynamic Range. So I do that now, and you'll see that the camera will take um, five shots, or I'll take five shots. So we do the first one. That's one, two, three, four, five. Now there's a bit of delay in between those two, because obviously it was processing the image at the time. Um, but you can see they've come up on there, and if I scroll through, so let's again make sure you can see that if I scroll through, let's bring that bed up, back up. There's one, two, three, four, five. All of the same thing, but different exposures. And that's how you do an HDR, or how you do bracketing. It's very straightforward, and you can do it with cameras that um, have that built in as a feature. They can actually do the HDR uh, and process it all for you. Um, or, where with mine, I can do that, but I prefer to do it manually. Um, in Photoshop where I've got more control. But if you haven't got that feature, you can still do it. If you just set your camera to have different exposures, um, and you might do that through you know, different ISO settings or whatever, but there'll be plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. Um, and I've been doing it for quite a few years, and the very first camera I had didn't have this bracketing feature, and I had to do it all manual. The only thing you've got to be aware of is, well, you're changing your settings of your camera. It's not to move your camera at all, because any you know, movement in the camera will change um, how your HDR will come out. So that's it. That's how you do an HDR. And that's something that I do all the time now. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm off to uh, keep my back to the wind. I've lost my um, wind beater on the microphone. Not good news, but never mind. Hopefully you can hear me okay. So we've... Um, walked a little bit so I'll show you where we've come from. We've come from over there so at the very top we were earlier on we walked down there for a little bit came across and then walked back up and then down and over and then up to where we are now and we're looking at this um, old derelict cottage um, and again thinking this would be good for doing some HDR. Dave's just down there take some pictures I've just been down there and taken some but I thought I'd just come up here and change the angle of um, what I'm taking I thought I'd talk you through and walk you through what I'm actually doing with these HDR I know I showed you a little bit a few minutes ago but I'll show you how we do it so at the moment I've got my camera set to aperture priority um, and that lets me set the aperture which is the F number so how big or small the opening is the iris as they call it um, so when I look at that, I'll put it into autofocus, that's good. If I go into this mode here, it tells me here, and hopefully you can you can read that. It's telling me that I'm on F8, that's the aperture that I wanted, F8, so I've got quite a depth of field there. Um, and it tells me the shutter speed, which is 1 600th of a second. Um, and I've got my ISO set to 100 ISO, so I want to keep a lot of detail in there the best I can without getting any noise. Um, so, sorry, let's go back to it. Um, <clears throat> now, I've got the bracketing set, and I've set it so that if I bring up the bracketing button, bear with me, it's telling me that I can do five shots. Let's get that in there, sorry, that's five shots with um, uh, one shot, sorry, with one uh, step 
uh, between each um, shot. So I'll get five shots with one um, step in between. So what I'm going to do now is if I just line this up, let's put it into live view so you can see. So I'm putting it just there. You can see I've got a horizontal. It's fair enough, near enough horizontal, but that, that will do for me. I'm going to lock the camera off just by turning that a bit. And if I just do that one up down the bottom there, that will obviously be the place. I'll come out of live view now. Now <coughs> I've got the camera set up with my wide remote because I don't want to move the camera around um, while I'm doing this. Sorry, I'm not very good with moving the camera around while I'm talking to you. But you'll hear now when I fire, um, I've set the camera as well so I to do uh, rapid shots. So I'm going to hit five times. I can just hold my finger down on the button and it will take the five shots for me. So if you listen, and if I get a little bit closer to the camera, you should be able to hear it firing. So there we go, I did all five shots. And those five shots are a step in between each other. So they're the ones, as I said, I'll then bring into Photoshop, um, knowing that the third shot, which is the, you know, out of the five, it's the middle shot, that's the one that's normal exposure. So if I just wanted to use that shot on its own, and I've got, you know, a, so I suppose a perfectly exposed picture, but I've got two shots that are underexposed, and that will allow me to get all the light detail and then two shots overexposed, which allow me to get all the dark detail. And that's all then combined together. All of those five are combined together. So you get a picture which has all the light areas that you would normally miss in the dark shadows, they'll be there. But also stuff that would normally be exposed, say like the, the sky and stuff like that, you'll be able to see the skies because it's slightly underexposed on the sky. We use the underexposed part of the sky to bring that into the picture. And that's how you do an HDR. It's very straightforward. The hardest thing is really um, putting it into Photoshop, and that's very straightforward. Again, lots of videos on YouTube will show you how to do that sort of stuff. There's other software as well. Um, Photomatics is um, a program that I use as well that can do HDR for you. So I would suggest, you know, if you're starting off with photography or you're playing around with it, have a look at doing HDR. Look at doing bracketing. Um, because if you do the bracket, you know you'll get the correct exposure if you just want single shot, but you've then got the versatility and flexibility if you want to do HDR shots either side. Okay. We're um, now at a place called Magpie Mine, which is an old derelict tin mine, we think. So we've just pulled up down the road there and we're going to walk to it. It's only a little way. Uh, and we'll see what opportunities we've got here. <clears throat> Again, we're thinking straight away that we'll be doing HDR because uh, rocks always look good, buildings always look good when you're HDRing these images. I turn around, you'll see it behind me there, I hope. Um, so really, this is on the leg going home. We did a lot of photography um, this morning, um, which is all very good. I've got some pictures of, again, that house, that derelict house, and it looked like they, they'll come out well. So we'll see. Obviously, I don't know until I get home how they'll come out. But we're, uh, I say, on the way home, so Dave found on the map this place and we thought we're going to have a quick look. So we'll see what we get from this. So we're still at um, Magpie Mine. And we've had a good look around. So I'll show you, just try and cover my microphone up because of the wind. You see, it's um, quite well preserved for 
you know, obviously at this age, I don't know exactly how old it is, but um, I've taken a few shots down there and I've come across this building here, which was um, a gunpowder um, store. So they kept it well away from everywhere else. I was thought, again, I'd do the HDR on this, but I might do a ND field, which uh, um, I'll actually do long exposure because I'm trying to get the clouds, see if they move and get streaky clouds. So I'll do a couple of shots. I won't um, video all of that. I'll just get on and do it and then put the shots afterwards. And then I think we'll be about finished for that. There's a couple of things that we're going to have a look at before we go, but I think we're about done here. <coughs> yeah, heading home, Dave says. So may catch you in a little while, or next thing you see us, see us in the car. Okay. Right, so we've finished for the day now, we've come back to the car. We've had a, a great day. What sort of day we had? Super. 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 That's serious. It's, That's been, been good. Yeah, it's been a really good day. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take us very long to get here. We live in Northamptonshire and this is Peak District. We think it's Peak District, but it's up north for us anyway. It took us uh, about a couple of hours to get up here. So for a weekend, very easy to get to. And when you get up here, you can see what we were seeing. It's pretty stunning. So again, as I said earlier today, if you get the opportunity to come up this way, then certainly do. So for, for photography, there's um, a lot of things to be seen lots of places to go. This place we've just been to, Magpie Mine, um, I'll put a reference to where it is, because uh, it doesn't seem to be anywhere on the internet or not very um, well publicised, so I'll put a link to where the location is and come and have a look. It's um, not a tin mine, it was a lead mine. Um, after all that, we found a bit of information that told us about it. Anyway, shan't ramble on anymore. Thanks very much for joining us. Until next time, thanks very much. Bye. Bye.